In this example, we have a two-stage turbine and the mass flow rate through both turbines is 2.25 kilograms per second. The mass of the steam entering the first turbine must equal the mass of the steam exiting the second turbine in order for us to have continuity. So if we take the first turbine first of all, in the first turbine we have superheated steam at 80 bar and 360 degrees entering the turbine and we have dry saturated steam exiting the turbine at 40 bar. Now that same steam that exits the first turbine then enters the second turbine and then it exits the second turbine at 5 bar with a dryness fraction of 0.65. The other thing that I've specified here is that we have heat loss to the surroundings from the second turbine of 85 kilowatts. I've not specified a heat loss from the first turbine as we're going to assume that no heat is lost from the first turbine. I've specified H1, the enthalpy of the steam entering turbine 1. I've specified H2, the enthalpy of the steam exiting the first turbine and then entering the second turbine. And H3, the enthalpy of the steam exiting the second turbine. So if we refer to our steady flow energy equation in the top right hand corner, once again we're going to assume that the change in potential energy is zero or negligible when compared to the change in enthalpy and we're also going to assume that the change in kinetic energy is negligible. When we look at the first turbine, we're also going to disregard the heat, but when we look at the second turbine, we need to include the rate of heat loss. So we'll just leave that term in for the time being. So for turbine one then, our steady flow energy equation is going to become P equals M dot delta H, the same as before, and that's the same as m dot h2 minus h1. When we come to look at our second turbine, our rate of heat transfer is going to remain because we're losing heat to the surroundings. So we have thi plus p equals m dot, and this time it's h3 minus h2. Because the steam exiting the second turbine has an enthalpy h3, and the steam entering has an enthalpy H2. The H2 values here are common for both turbines. So let's determine each of our enthalpies. First of all, we're going to determine H1. And as we've said, H1 is the enthalpy of superheated steam at 80 bar and 360 degrees C. And we're also going to find H2, which is the enthalpy of dry saturated steam at 40 bar. So let's find those two things now. Okay, so for H1, the steam entering the first turbine, we need to go to superheated steam at 80 bar and 360 degrees C. So we're going to pass the saturated steam tables here and here. And now we're on to superheated and we're looking for 80 bar. Here we have one and a half and three bar. Here we have 10 bar and 15 bar. 40 and 60 bar, here we have 80 bar. We've said the temperature is 360 degrees C, which is located in the left hand column, and we're going to track right until we find the enthalpy of steam at 80 bar and 360 degrees C. And we see here that the steam entering the first turbine has an enthalpy of 3020. The steam exiting that first turbine was dry saturated steam at 40 bar. Now the best way to find the enthalpy for dry saturated steam is we need to find the Hg value for saturated steam at 40 bar. So if we return to our saturated steam here, here we have the pressures in the left hand column and we need a pressure of 40 bar. So as we track down we find 40 bar. Now we've said we have a dry saturated steam. If it was saturated water, we would be using the corresponding HF value, but it isn't, it's dry saturated steam, so we need to use the HG value. So tracking right, we go past our specific volumes, we go past our internal energies, and we arrive at our enthalpy, HG, 2801. So let's transfer those values, and then we'll come back and look at how we find the value of H3. 
So H1 we said was 3020 kilojoules per kilogram. And H2, which we said was the same as Hg at 40 bar, equals 2801 kilojoules per kilogram. And now we can find H3. Now note that H3 is wet steam with a dryness fraction of 0 0.5. Therefore, we need to find HF at 5 bar. And we also need to find Hg at 5 bar. And then we can calculate H3. So let's go to our steam tables and find Hf and Hg at 5 bar. So once again, we need to go to saturated steam with pressure as our reference in the left hand column. We need to go down to 5 bar, 5 bar here in the left hand column, and we need to find the HF and HG values that correspond with 5 bar. We have an HF value equal to 640.2, and we have an HG value of 2749. So let's transfer those and then we can finish our calculations. We said HG was 2749 kilojoules per kilogram. And we said that HF was 640.2 kilojoules per kilogram. Therefore, H3 is HF plus X hg minus hf h3 then equals 640.2 plus the dryness fraction of 0 0.65 which is given hg is 2749 minus hf 640 0.2, giving us an H3 value equal to 2010.92 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so let's make a note of our H1, H2 and H3 values on the left hand side and then we can carry out our final calculations. Okay, so we have an H1 value of 3020 kilojoules per kilogram. We have an H2 value of 2801 kilojoules per kilogram. And an H3 value of 2010.92 kilojoules per kilogram. So let's do our calculation for turbine one first of all. We're trying to calculate the power output from the turbine. That equals the mass flow rate, which we specified was 2.25 times H2. 2801, noting that that's kilojoules per kilogram. It means we're going to get a power over here in kilowatts. Minus 3020, giving us a power output equal to minus 493 kilowatts, accurate to the nearest whole number. Now recall the reason this is minus is because it's power out. Essentially, the steam is doing work to produce the power. OK, let's repeat for turbine 2. Now, turbine 2 has heat loss, so that value of phi must be negative. We're going to be working in kilowatts anyway, so we can leave that as 85 kilowatts. But we need to remember it's minus 85. Plus P, the thing we're trying to find equals the mass flow rate, 2.25, H3, 2010.92, minus H2, which is the same as before, 2801. Okay, we'll multiply that out and then we'll see the effect of our heat loss. So we have minus 85, plus P, the thing we're trying to find, equals, multiplying out the right hand side, minus 1778 kilowatts, accurate to the nearest whole number. 
So if we were to disregard the heat loss, we would be producing 1778 kilowatts of power. But in actual fact, the power output is going to be less than that because some of that energy is being lost as heat. And we can see that when we apply the following to our formula. In order to get P on its own, we actually need to add 85 to each side. So we have minus 1778 plus 85, giving us an actual power output equal to minus 1693 kilowatts. Now once again, that power is negative because it's power output, but we can see that the effect of including the heat loss actually reduces the power output from the turbine. So in these examples, we've seen a number of things. We've seen how a turbine can be used to expand steam, thus reducing its enthalpy, in order to produce mechanical power or power output.